Good morning friends it is a beautiful Tuesday morning and today I thought let's take you along as I make some beautiful wax melts. Now I'm going to show you how to get a really silky shiny wax melt because I know when I started that was something that I found super super hard. So I'll show you my process, I'll show you what I'm doing and how I make them absolutely shop sellable worthy and uh, hopefully you can make some gorgeous ones. So let's get going and um, we'll make these beautiful ones. Now before we start the main process here's some I made yesterday and I thought I would just show you they're looking beautiful uh, don't rush the process my friends that is definitely something that I do talk about but I will give you some um, tips like I said on how to make these actually shiny because there is a few things that you can do a few products or additives that you can actually add into the wax but let's go and turn our wax machine on and get this one ready. So now to get everything ready, we do have our slow cooker here, or as lots of you know, it's also called a crock pot. So inside here, I do have some normal soy wax. So now this is a coconut soy wax that I've got inside. There's many different waxes you can use and you can use it. The only thing is you do need to put an additive, you know, like beeswax or something like that in it, because if you don't have beeswax, it's too soft. It's going to look really yuck and it will get stuck into the mold. So basically I just buy blocks of beeswax. I actually get them from Sud Off um, in Australia and let me find where it is so I can show you. And this is what it looks like. Um, it comes in a block form. So it's super, super cool. So we're just going to pop that in there. We'll drop it in there. And you want about 1%, 1 to 2% of beeswax in your recipe. So obviously if you're going to use say a thousand grams of wax, uh, then you would have 998 grams of wax and you would have a couple grams of the beeswax. You can put up to 5%. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. Depends how glossy you want the wax melts to, to um, actually be. So just test that a little bit and see what you think. So now that we've got this in here, we're going to pop the lid on. We're just going to let it melt all the way down and just till it gets to the right temperature. Now the thing is when you're going to pour it, it's a little bit trickier because we don't want it to get to the lowest um, temperature point that we usually would with this coconut wax. So this particular coconut wax, usually you would pour it at a really, really low uh, temperature, you know, about 43 degrees Celsius. But of course it has beeswax, so that would probably try to solidify a little bit. So usually I say pour this around 50 to 55, probably 55 um, degrees. But once this is melted, we can add our fragrance oils in. We can also um, add in some mica for colour. Remember there is no wick in this, so we can definitely use the mica. So now we've done that bit there. Now let's go and organise the second bit. I'll show you the moulds and I'll show you how I'm going to wrap them. And we will wrap the ones I've already done why this bit is you know obviously melting down because we need to just wait a little while so I usually just put this on slow um, and just let it do its thing it may take two hours but put it on in the morning and come back later in the evening so like I said, now that we're waiting for the wax to be done, let's organize these ones. So I'll show you um, a little bit about these. Hopefully you can see this one here is quite glossy. So if you can see the gloss, it has more beeswax. And I'll show you one that didn't have as much. Now you can probably see it's not as bright and colorful and it's a little bit more matte. Um, and that's just because, you know, if you just use the soy, that's what you're going to get. But this one, I obviously didn't add enough of the uh, wax into it. Uh, and you can get things like this where you can see that it's clearly stuck to the mold. Uh, and it just means you need to add more beeswax next time. So that's a little bit about that, isn't it? But now let's just wrap these up. So to wrap them up, I'm just going to pop them into these little plastic bags. There's lots of biodegradable ones you can use and so on. I definitely suggest that you do put them in um, a plastic uh, bag like these because remember it's wax. So if you send this in the letterbox and can you imagine if it's in the mail and then it goes... Uh, it's hot and it gets all disgusting well then your customer is going to be really really upset so anyway we're just going to pop them in these then I also have these boxes now these are boxes that that um, actually match these melts so these are the particular molds that we've used which is just the candy bar uh, mold and that's a five um, you know a, a five sort of 
you know, section um, candy mold. So all we're going to do is just, you know, do our boxes. I got these from Sud Off, so you can go over to there if you like, and it's in their packaging department, and that's sodoff.com.au. Uh, so it's in Australia. So let's just fold this down because I didn't do that properly before. And we're just going to fold the lid down and then I'll show you the bit that makes them beautiful. So obviously they're just in there. And then I've designed these on Canva and printed them out on my Cricut. But you don't need a Cricut, you can just print them on your standard machine. And then we're going to wrap them over here. So this is just done on a cheap adhesive paper. Uh, I get this from Stanley Packaging. So it's it's uh, just under $15 and under $15 you'll actually get, I think it's 100 sheets. So there's, there's heaps and you can get quite a few of these on the sheet. So now we're just going to pop it straight over the mould, making sure that, you know, the main bit I've done is there. We'll just, you know, stick this over and that's why you need the adhesive so it sticks. And um, the reason I have the gap here, you could close the gap up, but I had to do this so that I could fit three onto one sheet because that's what I wanted to do. And then I actually make these. Now these are just, you know, the warnings on the back, the ingredients list and so on. And then we're just going to literally stick it on like that. So then when it goes to the customer, it has everything on it. And doesn't it look beautiful? So basically that's how I do all of mine. So we're going to get going and like I said, make sure that we do all of these because they're all going to go into that. Do make sure on your label that you're putting, you know, the weights on there, putting what it is. So for instance, if it's, you know, um, a candle melt, you need to write candle melt on it. Um, it's really important that we do write all of these things on it and not be a bit lazy because if we forget to write something like that on it, somebody may just say, well, I didn't know what it was and before you know it, it's a bit disastrous and they might have used it for the wrong thing. So um, I know it sounds silly, but you'll be amazed. So just write, for instance, you know, um, candle melt or soy wax. And I'll show you this again so you can actually see what I've written on mine. So you can see here it says coconut soy melt and then it says what, you know, the grams in it. It says it's blooming rose, so they know it's a rose scent. Um, and then, of course, like I said, if they want to read the ingredients list. So on this list here that I've got, um, it does say Australian made. It has my logo on it, has the manufacturing details, and it also does have directions of use and warnings. Um, you know, I always write on my warnings, candles are not in intended for children. Um, you know, children's supervision must be adhered to and things like that because... You know, look, I noticed this at the markets. I have so many children at markets that actually come up to me and buy a candle. And I do say to them now, oh, does mummy know you're buying a candle? And often the mum will come and say yes. And I tell the mum on the spot, uh, just letting you know, candles aren't intended for children unless you're going to give strict supervision. And the amount of mums that have said to me, that is really responsible of you to say that. Um, so, you know, it's just covering yourself. Uh, as well as, you know, I mean, obviously we want to sell things, but, you know, you don't want to sell it to somebody um, that doesn't know how to use it or, you know, I mean, wouldn't it be terrible if the child went home, you know, snapped it in their house, used it and then burnt something or set something aflame because um, these things happen, you know. I know we all think, oh, that's so silly. Who's going to do that? Of course, parents will watch. Well, not all parents watch. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> we just need to be... Um, you know, really sure that we say that. On my website too, it does say, um, you know, candles um, are not recommended for children. They're not intended for children. So that way it's just, you know, like I said, extremely clear what it is. And make sure you write on your things too, you know, to blow the candle out or never leave the room, leave it unattended. Things like that. They're standard things um, that need to be said as well. Well, I had to wiggle that one in, didn't I? So yeah, so that's as simple as that. And now today, the one we're going to be making today actually is um, a lemon pie one. It's very, very popular. I sell lots of this lemon pie, um, which is kind of like a lemon meringue pie with vanilla. That's what it reminds me of. Uh, it's very popular. Like I said, I, I do sell quite a lot of it. And as many of you know, I don't just use the one scent. Um, you know, I often mix lots of ones to get the scent that I want. 
Uh, but these ones that we're making today have already been sold. They've been sold by um, a customer that's ordered online. Um, this is actually a wholesale order. And then I do need to make some lemon pie for this person as well. But I do need to get going after Christmas and, you know, just have these ones set aside. And the one thing I'll tell you about melts is really think about the scents you want to do because they're not, you know, you're not going to sell as many melts generally as you would candles. Um, for myself, I just definitely don't um, see those move as fast as other candles. So, um yeah, so I would say try and keep these to six or eight cents. So once I've sold the ones I've got, I'm going to just um, cut these ones down to a much smaller amount. So I'll probably actually maybe only make eight, maybe even less. Maybe I will keep it to six different cents in the um, melts because I have some that just sell all the time and some that don't so if you're going to sell them generally i would say you know have two fruity ones two sweet ones and two florals like generally they're the sellers things like um what's the other one that i do um sandalwood patchouli those ones for me do not sell uh not in melts in candles yes but but that's my clients as well generally my clients um you know prefer something you know sweeter or floral i sell a lot of florals a really lot of them so yeah you just got to find your market don't you and see what works like if you're selling lots of melts maybe melts is a thing for you maybe your customers really love it uh, but anyway i will keep wrapping these up i'm going to bring you back in a minute once everything is melted and we're going to add the next bit in um and um we'll go from there but i hope you are enjoying my video so make sure you give me a massive thumbs up we will come back in a minute like i said and we'll do the next bit so that i can show you um but make sure you give me a thumbs up because that really does help my little bubsy channel it helps people to see what i'm doing and hopefully love what i'm doing and um, coming back for more and of course I do have the Australian Soaping and Candle Conference if anybody wants to come to that you can come online and you can also um, come in person if you're in Australia or if you want to travel to Australia so um, anyway I'll put the links for that down below for you and I will also put the links where I've got these molds um, and the boxes and things like that I'll put all of that for you but like I said that's from start off in Australia anyway let's come back when everything's melted So here we are everybody we are back again so I have my wax in this container it is at about 58 degrees so it's not quite ready but uh, it's getting very very close and as I said earlier we do have the beeswax in it so we don't want it to get um, you know too cool now inside here I do have some of this beautiful Goldilocks it's called it's called Goldilocks mica and remember because this doesn't have a wick we can use mica but if you're doing candles definitely don't do it this way so now what I'm going to do is put my fragrance in um, this one here then we're going to separate it so that I can have one of a different color uh, because this one has yellow and white so we're doing my um, it's my lemon butter so this is my labels I've already made so it's the lemon butter ones and now I already do have this I was using this one earlier so we can just reuse and put some wax into this one when we're ready but first of all let's just simply pour this in um, and we're just going to give it a little bit of a mix you don't need to mix it too much honestly because I am going to like I said put some in this container and mix in the other color so now that I've mixed just a tiny bit um, we're going to literally just pop some in there and so literally this is what I usually do just pour it back and forward a few times just to get it all mixed in and as I said it's just we want basically half and half so one of them I'm going to leave clear so this one here we will leave clear this one here we're literally just going to be putting in a bit of a spoonful um, of this yellow Goldilocks mica which is super super fun and just make sure you mix it in and make sure that it is well and truly um, mixed because you don't want any bits of powder coming to the surface or anything so you know just kind of go along the sides and make sure it's super smooth and hopefully you can see that beautiful color it's so nice um, and like I said I'm just going to go around from the edge now there is a trick if you find bits on the edge and you think what am I going to do 
then basically what you can do from here is you can just get the heat gun and go around the outside. Now I did have a phone call so I had to stop in the middle so I am sorry. But anyway we've done those. These ones are ready. Let's just pop the lid on this. We will get these molds organized. So I've given them a bit of a clean out. Every now and then you should clean them out with soapy water. Um, which is really really easy and then we're going to just put some of this beautiful gold on the bottom to give it a bit of decoration so just get a bit of um you know a brush just a little brush and we're just going to literally pop it on the end and then just tap it with your finger that way you're not going to waste too much because this biodegradable glitter is extremely expensive as I'm sure lots of you probably know by now uh, and generally when I do these I'll do 12 all right, so now, like I said, we've got these. Let's just get pouring. Now, if you want a two-tone color like most of mine, pretty much what you're going to do is hold two of them and pour them in the same mold at the same time just so that it can get a bit of a um, pretty look. And this is literally all we're going to be doing for every single one. Um, and then we're just going to leave it on the bench to dry. Don't try and make this fast. Um, I honestly just suggest that you just let them slowly, uh, you know, just get hard by themselves sitting on the bench. Don't worry about anything else. And if you can see, you, you'll be able to see this beautiful yellow and white look. And especially when I take them out later on, you'll be able to see. Make sure you fill the mold to the top as well. People will not love you if you do not fill the molds up. Um, you know, they're paying for that. So it's important that you fill them up. And if you don't have enough, just go back and make more. So I will just go and make some more. Uh, but yeah, literally this is it. So we're going to let this dry. And like I said, then I'll bring you back and show you how gorgeous they're going to look.